All right, here to discuss federal trial attorney Alexis Rosenberg. Alexis, thank you for being with me this afternoon. What do you make of this aggressive, I think, cross-examination, really holding this officer's feet to the fire? What he saw, what he didn't see, what he missed, what he asked, what he didn't ask. Well, this trial attorney is very good. I mean, she's very animated. There's inflection in her voice. You really can't stop taking your eyes off of her. And she's really nailing those points. She's homing in on the fact that he was cooperative. He was the one that actually called the police the police and was providing all the information that they were asking for and now she's kind of narrowing in on the fact that he disclosed where she did her normal walks yeah, that's a great point that my ears perked up there, too, because we learned a little bit earlier in the body cam where a neighbor, I think they, she's asking him about this neighbor who saw the victim that morning between 9 and 10 a.m. in walking clothes. So uh, he said she's saying that my client you know, specifically told you where she likes to go walk that morning. How big of a deal is that for the defense here, knowing that there was this potential witness, this neighbor who saw her that morning? I mean, that's huge. I mean, there's an eyewitness that is saying that they saw her. She was in the walk in the walking clothes, like you mentioned, and it supports what he is saying that she does these walks. It also supports that she was there at that time. It puts uh, it puts her in a specific place at a specific time by an unbiased witness. Absolutely. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, no, I agree with you. We'll see where it goes from here. Uh, we're going to squeeze in a break. Alexis, thank you for again for being with me. Coming up. All right, let's bring in for a quick reaction to what we've been hearing so far. Federal trial attorney Alexis Rosenberg. Alexis, this is the best friend of the alleged victim here, Emily Noble, kind of setting the scene of how she met her and those key hours leading up to her disappearance in May. It was her birthday the day before. Her husband apparently forgot, according to her testimony. Well, yeah, that that he might lose the trial just on that. No, I'm <laughs> joking. But yeah, we have the friend. Now she's going to testify about the relationship that she witnessed between the two. Um, it's not faring so well for him so far with him missing the birthday and and the relationship that they have. Like you said, they are setting the stage for how close they were, how often she was over there and in what context that they knew each other. And so far, the prosecution's case, how they they called, of course, the sister first, then the um, responding officer to that 911 call, the body cam of reporting her missing, now the best friend. Do you think as far as the, the chronology or how they're setting up their case in chief is a strong start for the prosecution? Well, I mean, the way they're doing it is they're laying it out very methodically. I think the problem is so far, and it is so early on, but so far, I mean, there's really no, like, damning evidence that we've heard so far saying that he did this. Now, like I said, it's early on, but setting up, um, you know, that the officer came, and now that we have, we know that the friend showed up on that cam that she was there when the officer arrived at some point. So, I mean, the chronological and taking the jury step by step, I think is a very good approach. Yeah, I concur there. And we can see, of course, the defendant earlier today, he showed some emotion sitting there in the courtroom, wiping some tears, his nose. We're gonna continue watching this. We do have to squeeze in a break. Alexis, thank you for your insights on that. Don't go Okay, before cross-examination of the alleged victim's best friend, I'm going to bring in Alexis Rosenberg, federal trial attorney. Alexis, what do you make of her, her direct, especially how the prosecution culminated it with saying you organized all these searches and did her husband, Matthew Moore, ever participate? And she said no. Well, I mean, that's very interesting why he didn't participate and also how he appears on the body cam. I mean, he really does not seem that upset about his wife is missing. He's extremely calm. Now, people do deal with stress in different ways, but that coupled with the fact that he didn't even go on the search when all these other people were going on the search, as well as her immediate, the friend's immediate re, you know, was, I'm going to backtrack where she might be. I'm going to go out and look for her. Mm -hmm. But that was not his. Yeah, it is interesting to compare and contrast the best friend's response, reaction, call police, and how she was on body cam versus the husband. Great point there, Alexis. Thank you for that. We're going to take a break right now.
Still with us, federal trial attorney Alexis Rosenberg. Alexis, the cross-examination ending there. Denise Manash, Manash, Manashi, I believe is how she said it, but what, what excellent lawyering, really trying to poke some holes. She put the route that her best friend, you know, Emily's best friend, walked to the day that she was missing nearby where her remains were found, pointing out she didn't actually go in that direction. Um, and that in the years that she knew Emily and that she was married to Matthew, she didn't have, there were no red flags. She didn't fear that Emily may be in danger at any time. What were the highlights for you of that cross? I agree with you. I mean, clarifying exactly where she walked was extremely important um, because to, to say that she didn't miss the body, that she went, and it was really much shorter than was really described or as the jury may have interpreted from her previous testimony. But also, putting into evidence her testimony about the fact that they didn't have a troubled marriage. They're, they weren't fighting. They actually had a very close you know, relationship and that she was very close to his son who also committed suicide. It's very important because this is gonna go towards what was the motive. You know, Usually you have that testimony coming out in these types of trials where you have people testifying they had a bad marriage or there was some you know, sharing that they weren't getting along or something of that nature. Yeah, that's a great point you bring up other than what we, we discussed earlier about missing her birthday, not texting her happy birthday. <laughs> what other motive was there? And of course, we know prosecutors don't have to prove motive, but it is something that juries like to hear. And I'm also, I'm kind of following our uh, Court TV social media page and a lot of the viewers watching with us, Alexis, are commenting on the style of this defense attorney. But, you know, you've been in a courtroom when you can look at the jury, how they're responding to you. You can know if you could be a little more aggressive or if you need to take back a little bit. What do you think of Denise's style real quick? I mean, I think she has a great style. I, I think that, like like I said before, you're, you're just watching her and she's very animated. So I yes. think it's a great technique. Thank you so much, Alexis, for your time this afternoon and your expertise. We'll be right back.